Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It has been a while since I have done a sit down talking video, but as you can see from the title of this video, I am a 28 year old woman who is going to be getting a partial hysterectomy and I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about that. Now this is going to be a very thorough video, like I don't have any notes, I don't have anything planned, I'm just going to kind of talk, so it's going to be a long one. So prop your video up while you are doing dishes or laundry or whatever. I kind of want to give you guys a full picture, tell you about my history, tell you about why I made the decision. I want to tell you guys everything. Now here's the thing, this is kind of an uncomfortable video for me to film, and it's not because I am the type of person that doesn't want to talk about these kind of things. I am perfectly comfortable if somebody asks me talking about it, but there becomes this like weird line that you're entering, like you're, you're crossing when you film videos online because you want to help people, you want to be a resource for people, which is why I want to film this because in doing research myself, I did not find a ton of resources that I felt were helpful to kind of research the process. But at the same time, like, I do have a life outside of the online space. It just becomes like this weird, you know, you want to be a resource, but in real life, you wouldn't go around town screaming, I'm having a hysterectomy. So this is all kind of like new territory for me. I'm still going through it. I'm in the very beginning stages. So let me just get started and tell you all about it. Now, I guess I need to take this all the way back to when I had my second child. Long story short, I have not had a good night's sleep in years. Um, probably since before my son was born and he is now six going on seven in a few months. And he never slept as a baby, ever. He didn't sleep, he would sleep maximum 30 minutes at a time. So I was up for 16 months of his life every 30 minutes to an hour when he started sleeping later on at like 16 months, an hour at a time, possibly at night. Um, so I just never got sleep and I was always tired. Then, something that you guys don't know about me, and this is why I want to make this video, this is why whenever, if you follow me on any of my social media accounts and I tell you I'm just feeling so tired, I want to sleep all day, like it really looked like I was just a person that was being lazy, was not motivated, and that is not the case at all, that is the exact opposite of me. But when I went through all of this testing and all of the uh, doctor's appointments to figure out why I was feeling so sick, why I was feeling so tired, why I was having breakouts, of course, you guys have heard, we came across the fact that I have a gluten intolerance. So I ended up cutting gluten out of my life and I felt 95% better. Um, you know, my skin was back to normal. I was feeling okay. I wasn't getting sick. My stomach wasn't bloating, that kind of thing. I felt physically better. But I was still so tired, like tired all the time. And I just kept thinking, this is not normal for a 28 year old woman to feel this way. I should not be this tired. Like I should not want to spend my days in bed. I had doctors ask me if I was depressed. I was not depressed. Like I would tell them I'm happy with everything in my life. So it just didn't make sense. So after I got off the gluten and I still wasn't sleeping and whatnot, I thought, why am I still so tired? And it was right in front of me. It was so obvious, but I had just learned to live with it because I was made to believe that it was normal. And that is that, this is kind of weird to tell you guys, um, but about five years ago, I believe it was my, when my son was about two, two-ish, I think, I went to the doctor and told them, look, I have to pee all the time. Like, I constantly, constantly have to pee, and when I have to pee, it's not like a buildup, it's like I need to go, it's urgent. And this is kind of something that's really, I don't want to say it's embarrassing, but nobody knew this about me. There was probably three people in my life that knew that I was dealing with this, maybe my mother-in-law, my mother, and my husband and the doctor that told me, well, you've had kids, that's normal. And I'm not even gonna go into that whole process, but I was told everything from, it was from having kids, it was from my neck injury, because it's all connected, the whole shebang. So guys, when I tell you I was peeing all the time, 
it got so bad that I got to the point where I was then anxious about peeing. So, you know, we travel a lot and anytime we would travel, I would not drink a single thing just to try to avoid going to the bathroom as much as possible. Um, if my kids had like award shows or anything like that at school, I would go to the bathroom about five times before the show would start because I didn't want to get up during the show. When we go to a movie, I always have to get up and go pee in the middle of the movie. So I'll quickly run to the bathroom and then run back. And of course, when it's just me and the kids at the movies, then it becomes more difficult because I'm the only parent with two kids. So it just became something that was so miserable in my life, but I learned to deal with it because again, I was made to believe that that was normal. So I one day realized, well, maybe I'm so tired because I'm getting up eight to 10 times a night to pee. So essentially, my body was never getting into a state of rest. And as you know, if you don't get sleep, other things start to kind of affect your life. So you lose clarity, you lose, you lose focus, you are losing brain cells. So it was at this point that I said, you know what, like I'm feeling good physically, like my stomach is feeling better, but I need to figure out what this is about. I ended up going to my doctor. She referred me to a urine uro guy gynecologist i don't know what exactly what they're called but essentially it is a person that specializes in both urology and gynecology so she wanted to make sure that we covered all the grounds like is this a problem with your bladder is this a problem with all of like your reproductive system that whole bit and that started my journey that has now led to today today is wednesday april April 25th, I go in tomorrow for my pre-op appointment and then on Monday, I am having my partial hysterectomy surgery. What kind of brought us to this decision? I ended up sitting down with the doctor. He did an initial test and he told me right off the bat, he asked me questions like, um, do you feel like you completely empty your bladder? Do you feel like you have a hard time going to the bathroom, like having bowel movements? Do you have set or it, do you have pain during intercourse? All of these things that basically I have just learned to deal with and I didn't even recognize, or I did recognize because these are things I've dealt with, but like I learned to live with them. So in that initial test, he told me your uterus is really large and automatically his face is like, oh, I don't want to offend her. Like you have a very, you have a large uterus. It's normal, but it's very large and it's tilted. So basically your uterus is pushing up on your bladder. It's pushing up on your bowels. It's disrupting everything. In addition, I have endometriosis. So I have tenderness of the um, pelvic area, like my stomach. Anytime I go to a doctor and they do the whole push test, I have pain. So he didn't just like leave me with that. He's like, I want to be really thorough. I want to make sure we know what we're dealing with for sure. So I don't want to jump to like having this, you know, a partial hysterectomy talk. But in the meantime, here's what we can do. We can get you Botox in your bladder. We can put you on a pill. Um, all these different options that were basically all temporary. But we decided to go on a pill until something more permanent was going to be taking place. So I went on an actual, like a, a urinary, uh, what's it called, like bladder, in that bladder, or I don't know. It basically helps your nerves settle down with your bladder. So my life immediately started to change in that I was sleeping. I was waking up zero to one times a night. I wasn't going pee all day long. I was drinking water again. So of course what happens when you do all that, you feel better. I was exercising again, but I had to continue going through tests. I had CAT scan or CT scans and MRIs and urodynamics tests where they put water slowly up your bladder and they figure out the pressure and all this different kind of stuff. So I went through all this different testing and at the end of the day, all the results came back. He told me this is what we are dealing with. And let me first state that this doctor, he is a world renowned doctor. He is known for this area of expertise. He has kind of led the pack in doing robotic surgery with partial or with hysterectomies in general. Um, but he was very good in the sense that he never told me this is what you need to do for this to happen, or this is what I think you should do. He laid out every single thing that I was dealing with, 
told me my options, made me feel good about my options, like told me the pros and cons of each. And at the end of the day, I came home from that appointment, I sat down with my husband and we decided to move forward with the partial hysterectomy. I wanna be very clear that this was not a quick, easy decision. It is a major surgery. People treat it now like, oh, that's no big deal. Don't worry about it. You'll be in and out of the hospital in a day, but you are removing something from your body that your body is meant to have. But just to get a little TMI with you guys, I want to be very honest. It was not a decision that was made lightly. This is something that has gotten to the point where it affects my life so severely that I am not the person that I should be because I am living my life around these issues. So like I said, I always have tenderness in the pelvic area. At any time you touch it, it feels swollen, it feels tender, it feels sore, it doesn't ever feel good. I have extremely, extremely painful periods. The kind that I have always said, if you grow up having painful periods, labor and delivery is a breeze because I'm in so much pain during that time of the month that it almost feels like contractions. Like I'm hunched over, I can't do anything, which actually led my primary doctor to start skipping my periods. Like we set out a plan where I wasn't having them because it was debilitating. Um, uh, pain during intercourse. So it's very common for me to have pain during intercourse in lots of different ways, not just one way. Sometimes things feel almost like it's irritated, like it's swollen. Other times it's a clicking, which is the way that my uterus is tilted. Other times it is just general pain, like feeling like bruising during intercourse. And then other times it is excruciating pain after orgasm, which is, it leads me going to the bathroom hunched over a toilet feeling like I need to throw up. So it affects, you know, my own life and just going to the bathroom and, and being a human being that can like be amongst people and not leave every five seconds to go to the bathroom. It affects intimacy with my husband. It affects every part of my life, the bladder issue. I did not realize it until it was brought to my attention that it is he told me after I have this surgery, like even down to bowel movements, I will recognize immediately how big of an impact not having that pressing against my bowel will make. So it's just gotten to the point where I know this is something that I need to do. And I've joked about it in the past. I know it's a very serious surgery and I don't take it as anything but but I have joked in the past with my doctor that please take my uterus because I don't wanna be on birth control. So that's kind of an added bonus. I don't like the way birth control makes me feel. I don't like my body being manipulated in that way. I know for a lot of women, well, a lot of women this would be what makes that decision difficult, but I have never been more clear and I've always said this, me and my husband have talked about it, I've talked about it with family members. There is not a single bone in my body that wants another child. We have two, we have the boy, the girl, the energy feels right with the four of us, like everything about our relationship, the four of us, feels right to me. And so I don't have that emotional attachment to I'm losing the thing that gives me the right to bear children. And I will tell you, I did have a moment the other day where I was like, wow, I'm never gonna be able to carry babies again. And then that moment quickly turned into, wow, like I'm never going to be able to have babies again. Like I can get off birth control and I can have sex with my husband and not have to worry about if I'm gonna be pregnant, what's gonna, like I don't have to worry about any of that, which I know that might sound bad and I really, I'm gonna put a warning for anybody who's kind of gone through infertility issues and whatnot, but for somebody who just has all these issues that, wreak havoc on your life, that's just kind of an added bonus. <sighs> so there we go. I'm filming this video because I want you guys to know that I am going through this. I am going to be recovering. I will probably share little tidbits through my day on Snapchat and then hopefully as I feel up to it, I'm not sure exactly what to expect. I will be filming recovery videos to give you guys an idea of what that is like. Like I said, I am having a partial hysterectomy, so I'm only having the, the uterus and the tubes removed, leaving the ovaries, which 
if I'm not gonna go into it, but a full hysterectomy is a totally different thing. Like it is a way different ball game and I'm not even going to like touch on that. Um, but I am having the partial hysterectomy the doctor that I'm doing it, like I said, is known for this. I have not stopped researching him. He's been on the news and he's been in trial as an expert and he's released a book and he's released videos and created product to help with recovery and to help with surgery. And while my biggest fear in life, I think I've told you guys, is surgery. Like I have really bad anxiety about surgery itself. I feel at peace knowing that this is the person that is doing it and I have expressed my concerns to him I, I have expressed what I have heard he has told me the facts he said I don't want you making this decision based off fear I want you making this decision based off science and based off facts and that is what we've done so just giving you guys a heads up thank you guys for always just it's no secret that on YouTube here I'm very inconsistent and this has a lot to do with it. Just always feeling off and something hurting and feeling tired. And I'm hoping that this surgery will do like so many women have said and just completely change my life and make me feel better. Fingers crossed, but I'm gonna let you guys know through the journey. Thank you for sticking with me and I will see you guys in the next video. Be sure to leave any questions you have down below and subscribe to the video for updates or subscribe to the channel for updates and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.